you know, you got to keep in mind that although the Lord loves us, he lets us walk around this world in free will. And lots of times our will is not that of his. Lots of times we get caught up in this world. We get caught up following others. We get caught up. And, you know, this is a subtle way that the demon gets a hold of you. You know, I made wrong choices many, many, many years on my own. You know, I was brought up in the church when I was a little kid. My mom made me go. I knew all the little Bible stories. I knew everything. But then when I got to an adolescent age where I was big enough to make my own decision and my mom wasn't there to make me go to church, I chose not to go to church. Well, then I chose wrong. Yeah, I knew right from wrong, but it was more fun to do wrong. It was more fun to choose that. It was more fun to go that other direction. And you know what? Those were those wrong choices that made a difference in my life. You know, the thing is, I got into dope. I got into doing other things. I got into stealing. I got into just, just running around and terrorizing, terrorizing people, my own brothers and sisters next to me. And, you know, the demon is subtle. He introduced me to drugs, and I got to like them. And I liked them, and I had a, an addiction that lasted 29 years long. Methamphetamine was my favorite drug. And I did meth for 29 years in every which form or way it was. I did everything else, too, but that was my drug of choice, you know. The thing is, I made a lot of bad decisions. But the thing was that the Lord still loved me, and he still was with me because I raised four beautiful children. I had a wife. I had a business. I had everything going. But I still had that demon in my life. I still did that demon every day. I'm not talking I was a mild user on the weekends. I'm saying I did the stuff every day, every day, you know. And I thought I was hurting nobody but myself. But, you know, actually, I was stealing from my, my children. I was stealing from my house. I was stealing from other people. I was stealing from the jobs I worked at. I was stealing everywhere. You know, I wasn't walking a righteous path. Well, you know, eventually all that catch, catches up because the demon, his mission is to divide and destroy. And he did. He divided my house. I ended up getting divorced, giving my children up. He destroyed all my work, everything I've done. And this was about three quarters of the way through my addiction. Then I took my addiction to, an, uh, to a higher level. And I started doing it intravenously. You know, then I didn't care. I didn't care about the people around me. I didn't care about what was happening. I didn't care about working. I didn't care. I would steal from people. I would lie. I would cheat. I would just every, everything I could do wrong, I did wrong. Well, you know, it wasn't but about four or five years into that. And I swear, I, I, I am alive by a miracle here today because four or five years of shooting up, I should be dead. But yet the Lord let me walk through some very dark valleys. I have seen that demon, and he is very real. He let me walk through some things. He let me see some things. But the Lord loved me so much that he brought me back. You know, I did some bad dope one time, and my leg was swelled up as big as my thigh all the way to my ankle, about to lose my leg. You know, I was living in a little RV trailer by myself. You know, it's amazing how when you don't have no dope, you have no friends. Nobody will come around. Nobody will see you. <clears throat> yeah, I sat in my trailer for 10 days not knowing what to do. But I know it hurt, and I cried about it. And finally, I cried out to the Lord. And I said, Lord, if you take this demon from me, I will never touch this stuff again. And I got up and went to the back end of my trailer to go to the bathroom, and when I did, my knee exploded, and all this black blood just come oozing out. And I literally heard footsteps on the top of my trailer stomping away. That was my demon leaving me because I had cried out to the Lord because I was at the very bottom, and I was asking and crying to the Lord to save me. You know, the thing was that I didn't really even know the Lord. I knew of him, 
but I never knew him. I never had any verif verification of him. People tell me all the time, oh, the Lord told me this. The Lord told me that. Well, you know, the Lord never told me nothing. You know, I never heard his voice. But it says, blessed are the ones that believe and have not seen. You know? So he, he, he allowed me to see other things. He allowed me to see the other side. I've seen the demon. I've seen him face to face. I've had him laugh in my face, thinking that, you know, I was in a situation where I had no control. And basically I was. My life was spinning out of control. I had given everything I had. I had given my life. No. I had given my tools, my trade, my children, my wife, everything I had given to the demon. And I had nothing but my life. And then that's when I chose to give my life to the Lord. I cried out to him and said, Lord, I want to know you. I want to follow you. And I want you to take this demon from me. And you know what? That was eight and a half years ago. Eight and a half years. Now, in a 29-year stretch, eight and a half years is pretty much just a little piece of it. But the thing is, it's not only up to the Lord to save you and to give you that miracle, but it's up to you. You have to change your vision. You have to change your mindset. You have to say, look, I've been through all of that. I know what the Lord delivered me from. I know what I put myself through. I know everything I did, I put myself through. I made those choices, bad ones. But then he has something for me. He has a good life for me. He has blessings for me. He's turned my life around. He's given me back my life. He's given me back. He's, he's restored. And a lot of you have seen my little one out here. You know, lots of times I wonder why. He gave me her. He gave me her so I could bring her up in his light. Because my largest sin was not bringing the other four children of my life up in his light. Because I didn't know the Lord. You know, now I see them suffering from my sins. You know, they're doing bad things. They're doing drugs. They're going to jail. They're... They're, they're in turmoil because I didn't bring them up in the right way. So he has given me, he has restored me a second chance. But the thing is, I have to keep it in my mindset that I've been there and I've done that. Why should I ever want to go back down the same road that that demon stole from me? You know, he doesn't. And even if you go out tonight and hit that crack pipe, he still loves you. And he's going to love you tomorrow. Now, the thing is, the more we walk into sin, the more he backs off. He still loves you, but he cannot help you and bless you. You need to choose and make it a choice in your mind that you want to follow the Lord, that you want the blessings that he has, that you want the perfect life that he has to come for you, that you want to live eternity with him. We need to keep in mind we are not of this earth or of this world, but we are merely passing through. We are only going to be here for a mere 80, 90 years, whatever. That's a short little thing in the bucket compared to eternity. Eternity is what our goal is. Eternity with and the we Lord. want to keep that in mind. Every day is a test. And when that test comes, how are you going to act? How are you going to be? Are you going to act righteous? Are you going to act like Jesus? Are you going to be meek and inherit the earth? Or are you going to turn on your brother? Are you going to steal from him? Are you going to murder him? You know, Jesus raised it. Just mere hate is murder. He raised the bar. But I'm giving you an opportunity that if you want to cleanse your life, come up here and let us pray for you. Let us pray them addictions away. You know, the, I'm only here because there were people praying for me. Although I didn't know the life, my mother prayed for me all my life, I'm sure, you know. And now he's delivered. Now I know the Lord, and I know which way I want to go. And I choose that. And you have to freely choose that. But you have to choose to walk that righteous path and keep him in your mind, keep him in your sight, and keep your feet on that, that narrow, narrow path.